were sites that offered some kind of interaction between the site business and the customer. And ironically enough, all of that interaction was often the capstone of the customer engagement, typically the financial transaction at the end. But the transactional web really was all about buying things. The third cycle, what is popularly called Web 2.0, is the social web, where content and context and consumers combine to create a user-driven experience. Now in this most recent phase, the one that is now coming to a close, I believe, power shifted from the site owners to the site users. And for better or ill, we all found our voice. Now this coming fourth cycle is built on that foundation. But before I talk about where we're going, I hope you'll indulge me to emphasize where we've been. You see, Web 2.0 really isn't about a set of technologies so much as it is about a set of values. It's been about sites and businesses developed on open source and open APIs. It's about capital efficiency in companies and viral growth and the gestalt of free. These values inflated a hype bubble, but not an economic one, I think. A supposition that bears out when you consider and compare the wealth creation of Web 2.0 in this last cycle to that which came in previous cycles. Simply put, there really aren't a lot of Web 2.0 millionaires, and certainly not by comparison to the organizations and the entrepreneurs that grew up and grew rich in previous cycles. We think about Netscape and Yahoo and AOL and many others in the first flat web, and then Macromedia and Adobe and eBay and Amazon in the transactional web. In fact, the transactional web, frankly, the dot-com era, well, it spawned more millionaires than a, a tank full of guppies. But Web 2.0, it's really been more about notoriety and more about fame in this cycle, but not so much about wealth creation. And I'd argue that the fundamental difference is that this time, this next cycle, um, will be about creating real market value. Now, more importantly than making a few entrepreneurs rich in the Web 2.0 cycle, and, and again, I'd say that, that we have fallen short there. More and more people are using the web today. And the social web really has yet to find its reach. It's really yet to break out of the echo chamber. Today, a relatively small number of people, I'd argue tens of millions, certainly, but not hundreds of millions, effectively a slim majority when you think about the overall online population, are avid consumers of the social web. The barriers that prevent Web 2.0 companies from reaching to this very, very mass market are the lack of transparency and trust, the convenience of access, basic ease of use, and real choice. Now, in the next web phase, these barriers come down. To be clear, Web 2.0 has laid a foundation. It has been a critically important foundation and cycle in our business growth. But the really big growth that comes in this next phase, what I'm calling the distributed web. The distributed web is all about syndication, integration, distribution. It's about reaching out from one place and being present in every place. The distributed web assumes connectivity virtually everywhere. It assumes the objectification of data and applications so that both can be delivered on demand wherever and however the consumer wants to receive it. And we don't get to the distributed web with a desktop computer and a browser paradigm, at least not completely. The distributed web depends on devices and protocols and tiered networks, both physical and conceptual. It's the network of computers and it's the network of things. We're entering a period where distribu distribution and syndication trump aggregation, where meaning and finding trump keywords and searching. Applications and data are componentized and available everywhere. Hardware devices and the services on them are indistinguishable from one another. And where business models are real, transparent, and open. In this next phase, we take the community of Web 2.0 and hone it to a sharper weapon. One that supports collaboration for a purpose, 
be it a business or a social one. One that delivers information in anticipation of interests and needs. One that reaches beyond the elite early adopters to captivate the imaginations and fulfill the desires of people whose lives are focused on everyday tasks of work and family, of entertainment and business. We're embarking on a new cycle, a new phase, a new period of growth supported by real business models. Business models that hold up in both good and challenging economic times. And let's be clear, while the web and mobile technologies are integral to so much of the forward movement in the market, they are not the only markets. Over the next two days, we'll see important advances in usability, in security, in interoperability, computational capacity, and even a few outliers that point the direction to a greener and brighter and smarter future. All of these things will come together to drive the next phase of growth in the information technology marketplace. But I don't want you to trust my word for it. I want you to trust your own eyes. We have 72 companies who are eager to show you all that they've created. So I don't want to take another moment of introduction I really want to get on with the demonstrations.